So in this video, I will uh, talk to you about um, the configuration for uh, a Grela cluster using uh, three servers here. One, two, and three. We will gonna use the first server as master. The difference between the master server and the other servers, only the master can make the configuration for the uh, dashboards for adding new users or for anything else in case the master server we're gonna go down we can use the other two just fine but the only problem would be that we cannot make uh, configurations uh, in Greylog right now we already have the um, Greylog installed and configured on these three servers so I will just uh, walk you through the configurations that you need to perform. Right now on these uh, three servers, we have uh, Greylog 3.0.1 installed on them, which is the latest version at this time for Greylog. And uh, if you're coming from a, a previous uh, video where I was talking about Greylog uh, 2.5 or 2.4, the configuration files uh, look a little bit different. So I will walk you through everything that you need to do. Also on these servers, I have enabled uh, HTTPS. There is another video in which I'm talking about how to enable HTTPS. And on this one, I will just show you the most uh, important stuff. First of all, we will uh, need to check where we have our um, certificate and uh, the key, the OpenSSL configuration file and the Java key store. In my case is uh, in this folder, which is called certs. And I can show you how it looks like. This is the folder where uh, I have a copy of the Java key store. Here we have our uh, Greylock certificate, the Greylock key. and uh, this is the configuration file that i use to generate the key and the certificate if you're checking the first video where i'm uh, showing you how to enable uh, https uh, back then i was using only one server uh, this time we have three so i will just uh, show you how the um, uh, file looks like i will do a cat and then open SSL greylock.cnf and you can already see the biggest difference is that here we have um, three IPs instead of one the rest it's uh, pretty much the same and um, the DNS I have used the random one greylock.test.com doesn't really matter Okay, right now we will have to talk about the uh, Java configuration for Greylog. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that um, the Java key store, uh, the Greylog uh, certificate and the Greylog key, they will need to be the same on uh, the other two servers. So let me show you how it looks like. You can see here. So all of them need to have the same uh, certificate and key and the same Java key store with the Greylog certificate imported into the Java key store. Now going back to the um, uh, Java settings for Greylog, you need to go to um, Etsy, sysconfig, and then Greylog server, hit enter. Here you can configure the heap size for uh, gray log. And please remember that uh, this should not be more than 50% uh, of your current RAM. In my case, I have uh, four gigs of RAM and uh, I'm using uh, two. Uh, the rest are by default. And another thing where you're gonna need to take a look at is here, this part. 
this is where um, you you will put the path to our um, uh, trust store or the Java key store and uh, here the password to access that store by default it's set to change it so I kept it as it was so after you have uh, edited uh, the Java settings for Greylog you need to go and um, edit the configurations file for, for Greylog which can be found here then we do one thing so you can see the configuration for all three servers at the same time I will just copy this one and uh, I will clear it for all the servers and we will check the configuration on all three servers at the same time here we have the uh, Grey log one which uh, which is the master server and uh, we can take for example this window and put it in compare mode so you can see how it looks a, a master here on the left side and uh, non master on the right side let me write it uh, here for you So here we will have the master and we, here we will have the non master. Ah, sorry, I was uh, putting gray log uh, three here. So let me change this one to one. Okay. And you can see here that the value on the master is set to true and on the non master is set to false and this is what you need to have as well you need to take a look at the password secret and i have uh, already explained you how you can generate password um, and uh, more than this in uh, this configuration file you can also find examples uh, like this one here on how to do it so the password secret they need to match everywhere the root password SHA again they will need to match and here you have the password secret for the non master in my case I have uh, used um, this is the um, hash value for um, the password password because this is what I used um, you need to change this one to um, UTC or whatever time zone you wish to uh, this is a link uh, where you can see all the valid time zones and of course the root time zone would need to match everywhere and now here is something new for Greylog um, 3.0 compared to 2.5 or 2.4 are the bin directories for Greylog the default ones and the data directories the plugin directory was uh, the same as in the previous versions the HTTP settings uh, again are different So here I was uh, 
specifying the IP addresses that I was using on the Ethernet interfaces. Obviously, they are different on server by server. Then you have the HTTP publish URI, which is uh, more or less uh, the same as the previous one. But because we are using uh, HTTPS, here we have HTTPS instead of HTTP. If we would use only HTTP, we would uh, have uh, HTTP without HTTPS or without the S at the end. Another important setting which you uh, need to consider in case if you are going to use a uh, low balancer, for example, uh, here. Uh, you need to put the virtual IP address on that you have configured on the load balancer that load balances the traffic uh, between those uh, servers. In my case, I don't have any kind of uh, load balancer in front of it. So I just left uh, to the current IP address for each server. Uh, the same goes for the name. If uh, you would have... Uh, a DNS entry uh, for your virtual IP address. You can replace uh, this part here, the IP, with the name. So let's say, for example, Greylog. Dot. My domain. Dot net. And in case you will uh, want to enable um, HTTPS, you will have to remove the hashtag, which was uh, in front of HTTP enable TLS, which is what I did. And again, it needs to be the same on these two servers. And once you have enabled um, or set the value to true for um, uh, HTTPS or HTTP enabled TLS, you would need to specify the path for your uh, Greylog certificate, the path for your key, and the password to decrypt the key. In my case, it's a password. And these values they will have to match everywhere across your uh, Greylog servers in the cluster. Another thing which wasn't uh, in the previous uh, versions of Greylog, it's uh, trusted proxies here. Um, I have uh, kept the loopback and uh, here I have uh, added the subnet that uh, my Greylock servers are part of. So it's this one right here. Yeah. And again, the settings will need to match. Then you will have your um, Elasticsearch host configurations. Again, they need to match all across your servers. And these are um, our uh, Elasticsearch servers that we have configured previously. Depending on the number of messages that um, you are processing, or for example, if your buffers are getting full, uh, you might uh, want to toy around uh, with uh, these settings here. Please know that uh, if you're adding the process buffer processors uh, and output buffer processors, uh, this number should not be greater than 75% uh, of your CPU cores. So for example, if you would have, um, let's say, uh, 
19 CPU cores. Cores. Uh, the number that we are having here is 15 percent, 15 in total. So this is around 75 percent, or a little bit bigger than 75 percent of your total CPU cores. Anyway, you need to toy around with these settings to achieve uh, the best performance. Another uh, thing that you can uh, tweak here for achieving the best performance is the output batch size. And you can see here a quick explanation what the batch size is for Elasticsearch output. That is the number of messages uh, the Elasticsearch uh, output will uh, write in a batch call. Yeah, so uh, for example, you can have it uh, uh, 40,000, 45,000. And again, you will need to toy around with these settings until you achieve the best performance. Another key thing that you need to take a look at is the journal. This is where you can um, um, write messages which uh, we're not going to get processed by Greylog. So you can uh, store them in, uh, in the journal. By default, you will have a max age of 12 hours and 5 gigabytes. Of course, you can uh, modify all the time uh, these values. It's uh, especially useful when your uh, Elasticsearch uh, cluster has a problem or goes down and is not reachable. Uh, this will be uh, the perfect uh, backup for you to store the data until your uh, Elasticsearch cluster recovers its health. All of your uh, Greylock servers, in theory, should uh, have um, an NTP client installed and they should uh, all be synchronized using uh, NTP, but for any kind of reason that uh, you will not be able to achieve a perfect sync, you always have the stale master option. In my case, is, uh, it's set to two seconds. That means that uh, if uh, one of the servers uh, has uh, two seconds less than the other server, uh, they will not going to be out of sync. Because if you're not going to have the, the same time, this is how you can uh, tweak. And it actually tells you the time in milliseconds after which a detected stale master node is being rechecked on startup. So my idea would be to check uh, first the, the time and date on, your, on all of your servers and check if uh, they have some kind of uh, difference uh, in seconds. And if they have, you need to adjust these uh, values here. Now the um, MongoDB configuration, uh, because we are using a replica set, uh, I have it here. Yeah, and should be the same for the non-master one as well. What you have here is the Greylog user that we have configured in uh, the previous video where we talked about um, how we can set up a Mango database replica set and the password of that user. Then uh, you have the first Greylog uh, which listens on this port, the second Greylog which listens on the same port and the uh, first server which is li listening on the same port.
then you will have a forward slash here gray log that means that uh, you're actually telling your gray log to do modifications or to check this uh, uh, database in uh, mongodb here we have some kind of uh, example um, if you'd like to enable the email transport so that means that if you would have um, to set some kind of uh, alerts on Greylog, you can uh, trigger some uh, mail messages to be sent to you, uh, alerting you about uh, different uh, things that you like to be informed. And pretty much that's it for the configuration part. Once you have uh, done all of this, you will need to start your uh, Greylock servers using these commands right here. And of course, after you'd start your uh, Greylock service, naturally you'd uh, like to check the status. And the status, you can check it like this. And as you can see, it's uh, active and running on the first one, active and running on the second one, and uh, active and running on the third one. And after you'll uh, see that everything is running fine, you will need to um, go to the web interface and see how it looks there. This one right here, then with using, of course, HTTPS calling forward slash forward slash then 168184136 colon 9000. And uh, because we are using a self signed certificate, we will uh, have uh, this error saying that uh, this site is not secure, but you can go further clicking on details and go onto the page. Right now we will be prompted for username and password and I'm going to use the user, the default user admin and the password is password. Okay, and right now we are logged in into it. You can see here the version that we are using and an error message saying that there is a, a node without any running inputs and obvi obviously we don't have any running inputs here. Yeah, as you can see. Another way to identify the master server is if you're gonna click on this field here with the messages in and out. and the master server will have a star on it. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can uh, import uh, different type of uh, messages or how you can uh, parse them using Greylog. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe.